In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the new selectors that jQuery UI allows us to select elements from the page with. In the same way that jQuery itself adds new selectors that can be used to select elements based on different conditions, jQuery UI also adds some brand new selectors to our toolbox. jQuery UI adds three brand new selectors. The first of these is the data selector, which allows us to select elements from the page based on data they might have stored under a specific key. The key we want to select elements by is passed to the selector. Let's look at an example. In the working files, open up the data.html file. At some point in our code, we might use jQuery's data method to associate some data with one of the paragraph elements on the page. Later on, we might then want to select all elements that were given this data. We can do that using the data selector. And let's just log that to the console. And let's view this page in a browser. And let's open up the console. And we can see that a jQuery element has been logged to the console. And it's the first paragraph with an ID of data. And we can see that the selector used here is colon data, and then in brackets, the key of the data for the element that we want to select. Another selector we can use is the focusable selector, which selects elements from the page based on whether they are able to receive focus. Some elements are focusable natively, such as form elements and anchors that have a href. Other elements are focusable only if they have a tab index attribute. Elements must also be visible to be focusable, and elements with a negative tab index are also focusable. In the working files, there is a file called focusable.html. Let's open that up in our text editor now. We can see that there are a range of different elements on the page. There are two text inputs. One is visible and the other is hidden with CSS. There are two paragraphs. One has a tab index attribute, the other doesn't. And lastly, there are two anchors. One has a href attribute and one does not. Using the focusable selector, we can select three elements from this page. The first input, the first paragraph, and the first anchor. So let's run this page in a browser now. And if we open up the console, we can see that a jQuery object consisting of three elements has been logged to the console. And it's the first input, the first paragraph, and the first anchor. The final selector we have at our disposal is the colon tabable selector which allows us to select elements based on whether they can be tabbed to with the keyboard. As with focusable, some elements are natively tabbable, such as anchors that have either a href or a positive tab index attribute, and some form elements. Other elements are only tabbable if they have a positive tab index attribute. Elements with a negative tab index are not tabbable. Let's go back to the working files now. There is a file called tabbable.html, which illustrates how this selector works. Once again, there are a few different elements on the page. Again, we've got two text inputs. One has no tab index attribute. The second has a negative tab index. There are also two paragraph elements, one with a tab index and the other without it. Lastly, there are two anchors. One has no tab index attribute, the other a negative tab index. Both of these have hrefs. Using this selector, we can select just those elements that are tabbable. And let's view this page in a browser. And if we open up the console once more, we find that there is a jQuery object that's been logged to the console with three elements once again. And these are the first input, the first paragraph, and the first anchor. In this lesson, we looked at the new selectors that jQuery UI adds for us and allows us to select elements from the page based on different conditions.